Good day and welcome to SEO Bricks Insight where we look at what's really going on in the world of the bricks. Now today I want to talk about Venezuela, the South American country that's an ally of the BRICS members, particularly China and Russia. And the country has been at the forefront of the US's regime change effort since Karl Marx was able to spell Das Kapital. Now the situation in Venezuela in the aftermath of the recent presidential elections appears to be a little bit unstable and a little chaotic. I mean, the opposition maintains its objections to the National Electoral Commission's, the CNN, its decision to recognise Nicolas Maduro as the winner of the popular vote. Now there are major street demonstrations taking place being reported on by the Western media and they seem large but how many of the demonstrators are real and how many are egged on and paid for by the US NGOs, the Soros Foundation and the other partners in the US efforts at regime change in Venezuela since the days of Hugo Chavez. I mean, the US always claims every election in every country in the world is rigged if their preferred candidate doesn't win. Now that said, Mr Maduro himself, however, is not concerned with this, preferring to respond with dialogue and action. I mean, his address to the nation last week, the president, the newly elected president of the Bolivarian Republic, stated that the government is contemplating measures to neutralise the threats to the country from the West. He spun, without going into detail about the full list, Maduro singled out one of them in particular. The president said that the option of expropriating US oil projects in the country and transferring them to allied countries including companies in Russia, China, India or Brazil is already being studied. Now according to media reports these actions could also be extended to other allies of the United States that support the opposition such as EU countries. Uh, those individuals from the north and their associates around the globe uh, who are attempting to support the opposition, attempting to exert pressure, are making a significant miscalculation, says Maduro. He said it's likely that they will come only to this realisation when the oil and gas fields for which contracts for their development have been signed are transferred to our BRICS allies. That's what Maduro said. Now I imagine you can hear the squeals of outrage from the very people who froze and then confiscated Russia's foreign exchange assets and are using the financial war against it. I mean, their hypocrisy and hubris knows no bounds. Now before I continue I'd like to make an appeal. If you like and enjoy my videos you can help me fund my channel and the website seobricksinsight.com and further develop it. This is done by making a small donation and that you can do by clicking on the thanks button at the bottom of the video screen. Now everybody who donates does get a personal thank you from me and I thank you all anyway for watching this video. Uh, I really appreciate it. Now Mr Maduro to me has demonstrated an understanding of the appropriate approach to relationships with the West. Emphasizing the primacy of international law over diplomatic norms. I mean the rules stipulate that one should act in accordance with one's judgment and not be unduly influenced by the terms of existing treaties. I mean after all the US seems to know what it do what it pleases. I mean it invades countries, it bombs countries, it occupies countries, it sanctions countries, it blows up their pipelines and everybody in the West is too scared to challenge them on their actions. Now, it's well documented that Venezuela has been facing significant economic challenges in recent years including hyperinflation, high unemployment, pressure from the West and particularly the US. Now the objective of all of this has been to destabilise the political in in situation and install another pro-Western political puppet. I mean previously it was Juan Guaido, now it's Eduardo Gonzalez in the presidential role. I mean, the United States has effectively impeded the operations of Venezuela's primary oil company, the PDVSA. And it started operations in 1976 following the nationalisation of the oil industry in Caracas. Now that really upset the Americans and subsequently they've never forgiven. Then the 
company was uh, permitted to accept foreign capital with the authorised share reaching 49%. According to various sources, the company was between 20 and 24% of the world's proven oil reserves. Now, in October 19, uh, 2016, the Venezuelan government pledged 50.1% of Citigo, which is PDSA's uh, headquartered sub subsidiary uh, in Texas, for a $3.67 billion loan. Then it transferred the remaining 49% shares as collateral to the Russian government, according to the Panamanian newspaper Panama Post, which was part of the Panama Papers. So based on this information, Moreno has concluded that as a result of this transaction, Rosneft's got full control of the city gold refinery in the United States. Now, in, under Donald Trump in 2017, uh, he prohibited the trading of debt securities issued by the Venezuelan government and the state-owned oil company, as well as existing bonds held by Venezuela's uh, issued by public sector uh, of Venezuela. Plus, they couldn't get any uh, dividend payments out. Then the Trump administration put sanctions on the majority of Venezuela's tanks sort of fleet, intentionally of preventing them from selling their oil outside the country. I mean, these are all just yet another examples of the US using its dollar-based financial system and sanctions as a weapon, which has led to the de-dollarization around the world. I mean, in November 2022, amidst the global oil market crisis, the United States uh, reached out to Venezuela for an agreement so that the American giant Chevron could buy uh, the license number 41. Now, this enabled them to maintain operations and provide Venezuela with some uh, revenue and America got some badly needed oil that it was running out of, having begged the Saudi Arabians. Now, in 2023, they continued their pacification and they basically said they would suspend all sanctions and negotiations with the opposition on holding free and transparent elections. Now, that means that the USA means their candidate wins an election. That's what free and transparent means. Now, the USA is trying to do it again simply because the two opposition candidates, Karina Machodo and Corina Jordis, were prevented from running for president. Now, the US government states that the Venezuelan government has not fulfilled its obligations to guarantee the integrity of the electoral process. Now, so it's now reverted back to its sanctions and, you know, sanctions. Caracas is saying, well, we have to look at the situation regarding License 41. I mean, you also have to remember that Venezuela has given permission for other Western companies, including Spain's Repsol, France's Moral and Palm, and it is NA to resume operations in the oil sector. Now, Western analysts, including Francisco Mondaldi, who's a director of Latin American program at the Baker Institute of Public Policy at the Rice University in Houston, have said that the Venezuelan oil industry is currently reliant on investment decisions made by Chevron. And he said the nationalisation of the fields and their transfer to Chinese, Russian or Indian, Brazilian companies is a risky strategy that could possibly lead to collapse. He says to control inflation, Venezuela needs dollars and Chevron is the primary source of this country and its contributions have helped to prevent the Bolivar from dying. Now, the government of Caracas has made significant efforts to prevent the devaluation. Now, by removing the American company, he says the company could lose out on these dollars and its significant revenue. Now, what he's not taking into account, and he makes his pessimistic predictions appear more alarming, he's chosen to exclude the topic of the BRICS countries establishing their own payment systems for transactions and national currencies within the bloc and its partners. Also, the issues of settlements between countries and national currencies has been worked out and every other aspect of dealing with the BRICS. Meanwhile, um, they trade with Russia and China, they can trade with one and they can trade with, uh, with rubles. So with 20% of the oil transactions already around the world are in anything other than dollars. And for Russia, along with Brazil and China, India, the opportunity to strengthen their position in the Venezuelan market is actually very clear. And that provides not only new avenues for influencing global uh, oil prices, but also 
bolsters their stands in ongoing con confrontation with the US and other Western nations. Now, for Venezuela, the collaboration with BRICS countries and Russia in particular offers an opportunity to break free from Washington's malign influence and avoid the sanctions it's imposed on Caracas. It's anticipated that cooperation will, uh, <clears throat> with the BRICS will enable Venezuela to increase its oil production from the current 992,000 barrels per day to 2 million in 2025. And that's not the limit. Bear in mind, in 1998, production reached a record 3.3 million barrels per day. So that shows the significant potential for growth and profitability for investors from the BRICS countries. Furthermore, it's acknowledged that Venezuela possesses the largest proven oil reserves globally. So let's see what happens as the BRICS extends its influence across the country and the world and continues to challenge US hegemony. Now, thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe. And if you've enjoyed this video, you can help me fund the channel and the website seobricksinsight.com by clicking on the thanks button at the bottom of the screen. And don't forget to use the comment section. I do love to get your comments and I do love to respond. Thank you.